the laws of nature are also the laws of God. All visible processes are invisible processes made visible, and God is made visible in creation. So that man does not just have to follow the revelations of other men. He doesn't have to depend entirely upon the authority of the elders. He has a living wisdom available to him. He has this wisdom which is the wonder and working of the world. We have now the possibility of man exploring God through examining the universe. In this analogy between God and nature, there arose another mystery, and that was the mystery of the macrocosm and the microcosm. The macrocosm was the great world with all its machinery, and the microcosm was the little world fashioned in the image of this greater world. Our ancestors came to the conclusion that the most complete working instrument by which the universal will can be made known is man himself. Man is the microcosm. Man is the little creature fashioned in the image of his God. Thus to see man in a sense is to see the Creator. To examine from the outer part to the inner part of man is therefore to become aware of the law of the divine purpose and of the eternal wisdom. The nature of man himself was like the nature of the law. Therefore man to a measure is not only an embodiment of nature, but he is embodiment of the scriptures, of the sacred writings, and all of the mysterious laws by which the universe is maintained. The universe was generated as man is generated. The universe has its prenatal epoch as man does. The universe lives and grows like a man. It becomes aged, feeble, and ceases like a man. The universe then is patterned from a contemplation of the processes taking place in the biology and physiology of human life. Through the exploration of man, the study of all of his parts and members, man might come gradually to understand the universal principle for which he stands. Through the understanding of nature, man can understand the universal plan of which nature is an expression. Man can come to understand the Creator through his creation. The mystic says it is perfectly natural that man should want to know his own source. In searching for his Creator, therefore, he is only following the ancient admonition, Man, know thyself. And it dawned gradually upon his consciousness that he could never know himself without knowing his God. There had to be a direct knowing. There must be some way in which each individual could tune into his own need. There's only one possible answer to this mystery, namely that what man needs must be immediately available in himself.